men do this all the time. It's why I don't really have, I, I probably should, I get criticized for it. I don't have a lot of sympathy for men in these situations. They make horrible decisions based on crazy ideas. Anybody should be able to look at that image of a guy down on his knees bearing a diamond saying, this is how I want our life to be, as totally unsustainable. Right. But it doesn't even enter our minds. We're just like, oh, no, she's smiling. Because it's been programmed into us for like a thousand years. Exactly. And it is not a natural arrangement between men and women. Like I said, gynocentrism, a certain amount of it, is natural. It, mm-hmm. And it's easy to understand how we got there. Yeah. But this romantic notion, matrimony, you know, so they don't call it patrimony. Mm-hmm. Ma- marriage, matrimony used to signify a time when a woman put aside being a child and became an adult responsible for a family. She had to produce. She had to do all kinds of things. She had to take care of children. She had real responsibilities yeah. and real work. And then when we brought romance into it, the object right. became, oh, you don't have to work. You We just put a cushion under your butt and you can enjoy life that way. Yeah, well, that's the, because that's what I would always hear is that we didn't have to work back in the day, but we used to live on farms. <laughs> so I'm like, life was a billion times harder <laughs> if you were a stay-at-home <laughs> wife a hundred years ago. <laughs> and you know, I hear most of that crap from men who who think somehow that there was this magical patriarchy in the past uh, where women didn't work, women worked brutally hard and had shorter lives yeah. because of it for thousands of years until we developed the technology to rescue them from that. Mm-hmm. And we've applied it all in a, just such an insane way. I mean, sorry, look at the state of women right now. How many, what percentage of women are even marriageable? Uh, right 3% now. statistically, if you want no tattoos, no debt, and <laughs> and under the age of 35, I think. Yes, and... and there's, there's a couple more they added into it, but it was like in the book of numbers, like not overweight, no other kids. <laughs> 3%. Like, yeah, yeah. And so it becomes a man's job, and here's and the problem. Men just have to man up and marry these whores. If yes, of the course they cons. do. That's, yeah. a, that's the right thing to do, and that's what they've been doing, which is why, you know, half of the marriages are failing, and then yeah. 70% of second marriages are failing failing. It's a failure of men mm-hmm. in my book. They want to practice these unrealistic expectations. And I think they've got a, a sort of shame-based thing going on here. If we don't make women happy, we're not men. That's also tied into this. Oh, wow. That's really true. I didn't think about that till you said it, but that's really true. It is. If we don't Because that was even during the Michael Knowles debate. That's what he said. I said, well, if she gets the wrong group of friends, she can leave if she does this. And then he's like, oh, well, you got to watch the friends. You got to watch the leadership. And so it's like putting all accountability for a marriage failing on the man. Absolutely. When sometimes like a chick just, he just wants to go. He can't do anything. (laughs) Like, And most of the time, I mean, monogamy is a hard thing. To maintain for both sexes, yeah. I, it's tough. Women have easy outs. Mm-hmm. And if men don't make her happy, the first thing she's going to do is attack his masculinity. When she uh, goes out and bad mouths him, it'll be all things that undermine his status as a masculine man. He doesn't work hard enough. He doesn't pay enough attention to me. He doesn't do this. He's always doing that. These are things that shame men, mm-hmm. and and we buy into it mm-hmm. instead of, you know, <laughs> treating her like a guy, which is what I recommend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Explain that a little more, treat her like a guy. Same standards. Yeah. Guys will take shit from women that they would punch a man in the mouth for. Right. Constantly. They do that. That thing, and I'm not, no, for somebody says Paul Elam's recommending punching yeah. women in the mouth. I'm not recommending any such thing. But just the capacity to hear a crazy unrealistic expectation, like I want a three-carat emerald cut VS1 diamond for an engagement ring. Guys don't have the ability, or they should have the ability, to say, the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Go buy one. I, I did a show, and a girl wanted a $200,000 engagement ring for an overweight, like, 33-year-old woman. 
And I'm like, two up for I mean, at least be like 22, you know, and hot. If you're going to ask for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at least you got to be a seven or a higher, at least. Which I got I'm a not... better idea. No ring. Oof. Yeah. No nothing. Yeah. We are in an age where I think it's okay for men to start telling women, you're responsible for your own happiness. If you need a piece of carbon mined by slave labor, a 12-year-old in Africa, to feel good about yourself, go buy one. Right. Women can work. They can produce. Mm -hmm. Guys won't do that because it makes them feel unmasculine. Right. And so it's a trap. Nobody's going to survive. And love is... You know, love is a funny thing. The romance stuff and infatuation, none of that is love. It never was love. Mm -hmm. Love comes 15, 20, 25 years into a relationship with somebody. And how do you get to that point where there's real intimacy and real love if one person's fawning over the other all the time? All it does is build resentment and entitlement. Mm -hmm. 